Aquaman here, legendary within the martial arts, trained many known names, runs the pits. Honor to have you on. Thank you. Uh, Great to be here. You often emphasize, don't let anyone take your lunch money uh, on your videos, on uh, instruction videos, on Instagram and on YouTube. So uh, how important would you say it's, is it to be able to handle bullies as a teenager and in life in general? Yeah, it's a good, that's a good one. And the lunch money, first of all, the lunch, lunch money is uh, taking the lunch money is, is real. It's, it's, it's a real thing. People will take your lunch money, especially back back home. That's why I came up with it. Like the, the way the guy, the bullies would, you know, usually uh, manifest themselves upon you would be, give me your lunch money. That's, I mean, that's literally what they would say. Give me your lunch money. And it's it was usually a quarter back then, but, um, but now um, it means a lot of other things to me. It's like, don't take your lunch money if I'm a UFC fighter or if I'm training my UFC guy, don't let them take your lunch money. In other words, don't let them take your world title or your or your rankings or half of your purse, you know, because the winner gets twice as much. So that's your lunch money then. If, if, you're, if you're defending your life on the street, your life is your lunch money. You know, your home, your health, your family, that's your lunch money. So uh, it's, it's, it's real literal lunch money and it's also a metaphor for just don't you know be a don't don't let you know people bully you basically don't let them take your shit literally figuratively mentally emotionally physically monetarily don't let people take your shit and your shit is your lunch money so well said so you you've trained a lot of uh really known names and legends um, when did you start training Chuck Liddell and uh, how was that? Um, we we were in the same town. We ended up in the same town, him because of college and me because just life led me there and I bought a house. And so we're in the same area and we were kind of in neighboring little towns and um, we were kind of known as he was known in his town, college town. He's the bouncer, you know, big guy with a mohawk, and he knows how to fight. He's a rough guy. You know, I open a little um, backyard gym in my in my little hometown, um, and people start coming to the pit, and they get starts getting a reputation, you know. Um, so I get the reputation of, of being the, the tough guy in this town, and they're like 15, 20 minutes apart the two towns and uh, somebody set up a little sparring match between the two of us because they wanted to see us two who was tougher um, and we did and um, I started I, tra I started training him the next day he came to my gym the next day and you know that was 94 I think or so 1994 but we've been training together you know I became his trainer then and you know all the way till the end of his career. So I read that after meeting with uh, Tony Robbins, um, he he changed your life. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about that and um, how that was? Uh, we we were talking on the phone here and there. I went to a few of his you know shows. He even would you know get us in and and do VIP and um, we 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 did some work together with a couple fighters um, throughout the years. Like he was hired to help them, you know, certain ways, like, you know, mentally and, and stuff. And he thought that my expertise and the, the techniques and the, the, that martial aspect of what they did, if he knew more about it, I would like, you know, give him, you know, what's going on with, with the martial art aspect of their training, if they needed help. I don't know, we became, you know, did some work together. Uh, but I really needed him. One, I, I was having a really hard time at one point. Uh, I've, I've never been like a depressed guy or had any, but there was one short part of my life where just things weren't going good. And it just, it, I just felt depressed for the first time. And um, he, he called me out on it and, and got like brutal. I mean, he does not buy, you know, he doesn't buy that shit. He thought, you know, he thought I was just being basically in his words, a fucking little bitch and um, so we talked and I even went to his house and had a 
hour and a half long conversation with just him, which is, it's, it's, it's like, and I don't use this word very often, surreal. Like you're talking to Tony Robbins, he's this close to you and he's just talking about you, nothing else. He's not doing a video of his, you know, of his show, he's not scripted. He's just talking to me, you know, asking me about my life, asking, you know, and then giving me advice. And it was like, I was just sitting there for like an hour and a half, just like, holy shit. And I drove away and nothing was ever the same in my life, you know? I looked at everything differently. Mainly, mainly my, um, mainly my, uh, my, my GM and my profession and my love and my passion. And, and um, it, it changed my life. And I, I love Tony Robbins. I, I would, he's one of my favorite humans. But yeah, so that's yeah, that's my that's my thing with him. Another guy who is uh, interesting nowadays, in which uh, the Meta platform just banned, um, is Andrew Tate, and he spoke of depression, and he but he also spoke about different other things going on in society. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? What do you think about the state of freedom of speech today? And do you think it was right to ban uh, Andrew Tate? You can't yell fire in a, in, a, in a theater, right? I mean, you know, there's a reason you can't. There's a reason you can't yell fire in a you, The guy could say, hey, what about my freedom of speech? And, you know, unfortunately, or fortunately, you know, some people can't say certain things. Like, like you can't go up to a guy or a chick and say, I'm going to, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you right now. You just, that's assault. You know, you can't say, well, freedom of speech. So I love freedom of speech, but, um, you know, I, I think our government in, in, is is held, is gonna, it should be held to, you know, different, um, different standards when it comes to the constitution, which, you know, I, I serve this country too, and I believe in that. And I, you know, I, I would, I would, I fought for that, you know, and I would do it again. So. Got really rich and got a lot of leverage, a lot of followers. And as soon as yeah. he started talking about masculinity and the COVID stuff and, uh, yeah. you know, the Biden and the politics and the, the whole yeah. globalization. Well, I was, don't forget, I was fan too. And uh, not, not in a big, huge platform like, you know, him or some of the other guys, but I mean, my, my count, I mean, there's people in my, you know, in my, in my town that were doing, and there was council meetings trying to shut me down. There was, there was, there was an actual hashtag boycott the pit because of my stance. Right. And then, you know, there was, there was like the city council meetings where it lasted till like two 30 in the morning where they just, they were protesting to close me down, to shut my gym down. So I was on the TV, I was on the radio, we're in the newspaper all over the internet shut us down um so i i you know i i i tasted that firsthand it's not fun at all when you get shut down or 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 you know you get canceled or whatever it wasn't fun you know marching to close our gym i mean all i have is the gym i mean i'd lose that i would lose everything and thank god our town is a great town and they were like no we're not going to boycott that we're going to go there. So we're busier now than we've ever been. But with that said, I tasted um, the boycott. Yeah, we had the guns on the roof when when I thought the you know our my gym was in, in danger. We had weapons. We had guns on the roof, and we had you know guys with weapons in the front because I didn't want to lose my business over some some protest. Because yeah. um, I I've seen what protests do. You know, all over the all over the world, but I'll say all over our country, especially all over our state. That's what I'm mostly. And they're tearing. They they burned down a, a martial arts gym in uh, in Long Beach. I think it was a Tenth Planet. They didn't steal anything. They just broke into it and burned it down to burn it down. Wow. And nobody says anything. And, oh, they're peaceful, peaceful, peaceful. Not too peaceful if someone's burning down your entire life your entire life, that's all you have in life. You, you put every penny to open this gym and some fucking pieces of shit will just come and burn it down because they want to. They don't even know why they're doing it. Yeah, the little that's, white, that's, white that's, kid, they're little white kids saying, this is racist, everybody's racist, every white person's racist, but me of course, I'm not, yeah. But we're gonna march and we're gonna burn things down 
because we're gonna look out for those guys. What, who are we marching for again? Oh yeah, 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 BLM, yeah. So it was just, so we, I tasted uh, at my gym, my wife, my poor wife, uh, we're, we're strong supporters of, uh, of freedom, any kind yeah. of freedom, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, I remember the peaceful protests on uh, CNN when you had like, uh, mostly peaceful protests with like neighborhoods in the background on fire and everyone running around, running around screaming. Um, it's just crazy it's, how- It's always yeah. peaceful until it's in your yard, right? Then exactly, all of a sudden- yeah. And I heard uh, Jordan Peterson speak here. Um, he, he said a good thing about freedom of speech and he said, um, stand for what you believe in and don't let the moralizers moralize, which seems to be a big thing uh, nowadays. You watch any Cobra Kai? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what do you think of that? <laughs> I, I love it. I yeah. love it. I love it. And, okay, you watch, they went into Johnny, I think it was Johnny, and they went into his office. Somebody went to his office. He was reading uh, Black Belt magazine, and I was on the cover. That's right. You you were on the Black, uh, Black Belt magazine cover. So, uh, my, like, if I was, if I was a big shot like Chuck, that's no big deal. But since I'm not a big shot, just a little thing like that is like, I was in the show. I'm gonna tell everyone now I was in that show, even though I wasn't. But I don't care. Because I was like, yeah, you kind of were. I don't care if I'm not. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm that guy. I'm, I'm, at my age now, I'm gonna be that guy. I'm gonna be the big leaguer. Like, I'm a big shot guy. I'm gonna pretend. Wherever I go, I'm like, what? You don't know who I am? I'm gonna be that guy. <laughs> awesome. Um, all right, F uh, favorite martial arts movies? Karate Kid, without a doubt. Karate Kid, all right. Oh, and Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. I wasn't even thinking of Bruce Lee, yeah. Yeah. Any Anything Bruce Lee, mainly Enter the Dragon, Return of the Dragon. Fist of Fury was okay, but uh, probably Enter the Dragon and Return of the Dragon. How was it to be on a Joe Rogan podcast? Uh, I love Joe Rogan. Uh, and when he said it was gonna be like three hours long, I was like, oh shit, I, I don't even know what to think. And then I got on and started talking to him and it seemed like like 10 seconds later, he goes, there we go, three hours. It was like, boom, uh, such a genius. I think he's a genius. Um, I think he's a, a, a great, a great um, representative of martial arts period especially MMA in the UFC. Uh, so I, I love Joe Rogan. I think he's, uh, and I love being on a show.